Beyond Lumina, Episode 9, Drop, Crag, Nail. Quick, you must hide, Butterglass said to Vala and Azik, who had entered the Temple of Omnis when the young hooded man came in with the news that Drop had arrived. Sauter, take them to the crypts. Yes, Fodor, Sauter Talarans replied. Please, come with me, you two. Azik and Vala followed the Sauter to the other side of the sanctuary, where there was a narrow staircase leading down into darkness. This way, Talarans said again, going down the stairs. They all had illuminators, alleviating any issue due to the dark. Why don't you keep this part of the temple lit? Vala asked. Everywhere else they had been was illuminated by dim, yet consistent orange light. It would be a lot of energy, as it is very deep, Florence answered, and it's not visited as frequently as the other areas of the temple, so whoever goes just brings their own light source. Klaus called it the crypts, Azik started. Did he mean an actual crypt, like one of those ancient burial sites? Yes, the Sauter responded. Filled with all of those of our order who have passed on to the next world since we've been here, and some others as well. Azik was astonished. I can't believe they still hold to such pointless practices, he thought. Do they think the person will need the body later or something? I can't even imagine going through this much trouble just to store the deceased either. It's got to take a lot of effort to keep expanding. You could tell it had been a process that began a very long time ago due to the sheer amount of distance they ended up traversing. So what can you tell us about this drop guy? Isaac inquired as they walked. I assume he is ascendancy sent to oversee what happens here, based on what Fodor said, and the fact that we're running now. Yes, and more, Clarence replied. He is quite ruthless, and despises both our people and our ways. And he hates coming here. It's not like outlanders are barred from Kostia. But if he finds you here, we are in great danger. What I don't understand is why he has come. How did he know? If he landed at the hangar in Omnis, then he's seen your ship too. Azik was worried about the crew aboard the Avian ship as well. Valanth, Mecca, and Argyle. The others should be safe if they stayed at the Space Inn. Then he remembered the conversation between Glaus and the other voter, their first rotation here. One of the other voters. I think his name was Blem, Azik said to Tlarens. Wasn't happy to see us here, and told Glass he was going to tell someone named Abo about it. Oh, Abo Avila, slaughtered Tlarens answered again, then stopped as she saw Azik nearly doubled over in pain. Are you okay? They're headaches he keeps getting, Bala responded for him, but they passed quickly. The headache was gone, in fact, before Bala had finished speaking. Sorry, Azik apologized. You were saying? Well, Florence began again. The Abu is the head of our order. The most important and most grave matters are taken to him, and he is entrusted with the stewardship of both the devotees as well as the ordinary believers of Kastia. He certainly wouldn't have let the Ascendancy know you were here, and neither would Father Blem, despite his not so cheery attitude. He would never put us or the temple in danger. Isaac wished he could know more about the situation and what was going on out in the sanctuary now. They were essentially trapped, however, and now had to rely on the old hooded man who had saved them once already. We know they're here, old man, a sharp, angry voice said to Glaus. So just make it easier on yourselves and take me to them. Please, Butterglass implored Drop, the Ascendancy Officer. I don't know who you are talking about. There is no one here. Let us worship in peace. Already going to try my patience, Drop replied. Fine then. We can always start taking it out on your people until you comply. For Omnis's sake, Glass repeated in exasperation. Please don't do this. If we knew of Outlanders on planet, we would have informed you. More lies. Drop said impatiently, and I don't answer to imaginary creatures. He then turned to the other eight soldiers who were with him, but two in particular. Crag, Nail, turn this place inside out. Find them. I, the two other officers of the group replied, and took off with the other soldiers in two groups toward the eastern and western wings. 
the female officer took her group into the eastern wing, while the male officer took his into the western wing. Glass stood by watching in anger, knowing he could do nothing to stop it. We just need to bear it a little longer, he thought, as he stared down the cold ascendancy officer. Drop then began to walk the perimeter of the sanctuary, examining the various pieces of art with a look of disdain. You better hope we don't find them, old man. Drop started again as Glass followed him around the temple. If I had things my way, we would have blown your miserable rock away ages ago. But all I need to sway the minds of my superiors is any evidence of your treachery, and you can say goodbye to this precious temple of yours. I'm well aware, Klaus replied through clenched teeth, which is why we would have come to you if there was anything out of the ordinary going on. A while later, and the other soldiers emerged once more from the eastern and western wings. We didn't find anything, sir, the female officer reported. Neither did we, said the male officer. Very well, Drop turned back to Klaus. If this is how you want it to be, we will do this the hard way. He then addressed his comrades again. Go out into the city. Each of you arrest a citizen and take them back to the ship. We cannot get who we came here for. We will take them back to Evrop with us. No! Glass cried, but it was useless. The soldiers too happily carried out their orders, bursting out into the city square from the temple and grabbing whoever they saw. The citizens were immediately in a panic, and they all began to try and flee. But not all were successful, and the soldiers came away with three elderly men, four women, and a younger boy, all of them frightened out of their wits. Load them into the grav cars, and let's go, Drop said to the soldiers. Then once more said to Glaus, Perhaps next time you will comply. Please do not do this, Glaus pleaded with the Ascendancy Commander. I can't give you what you're looking for. Until you can, Drop replied. These people will be our guests back on the homeworld. Pray to your deity that we don't come back and do worse. He walked away from the photo, back to the grav car, and the Ascendancy soldiers took off for the hangar. Fear and hysteria gripped the city. What have I done? Klaus thought. Klaus hurried through the crypts and found Azik, Vala, and Clarens, then relayed to them what had happened. Azik was surprised. I don't get it. Why didn't you just give us up? It was too late for that the moment I brought you here, Photoglass said. Like I told you, Sodder Clarens added, if they knew Outlanders were at the temple, our entire world might be in danger. You're insane. Why would you put your people at risk for us? Azik asked, almost upset at the Fodor for making such a disastrous decision. We could have gone anywhere else on this planet. Why bring us here? Because, Glaus began, as though he wasn't satisfied with the answer he was about to give. You needed to learn about Omnis. You let your people get taken, Azik said, so that you could try to sell me your religion? What is wrong with you people? It is the will of Omnis, Glass said more boldly. It is time for us to be freed from our shackles, or else the Ascendancy will eventually destroy us, and I believe you are the one who has been sent to help us. This is all nonsense, Azik replied, and you certainly do need some help. This was bound to happen eventually with your fear of weapons. Do you even have a military? No, but we're leaving, Azik cut Glass off. So you need to figure out how to convince that drop character that we were never at the temple, just because our ship was docked in the city. He seemed so certain you were here, Klaus answered, but he never mentioned the ship at the hangar. We need to get to the hangar and make sure everyone's okay, Zario said to Pilani and Usian. After seeing the squad of Ascendancy soldiers speed down the street toward the Temple of Omnis. How are we going to get there without grab bikes or cash? Villani asked. We'll just have to borrow some bikes from the good citizens of Costia, Zario replied. Well, alright, Villani answered. The three left the Costian diner, and Villani found three grab bikes parked nearby that he thought were suitable to hack, then took control of them. He, Zario, and Usion were quickly on their way to the ship and the rest of their crew. Speeding through the well-structured city, startling everyone they passed, 
the mercenaries arrived shortly at the hangar. Once they got there, they all stopped and stared. I can't believe it, Zarya said. They've left without us. Back in the city center, outside the Temple of Omnis, the citizens were in a wild panic, imploring the devotees to save them. Azik was growing exasperated because of these people he considered so foolish, and because they've now made him an unwilling participant in their people's demise. Since they were leaving soon anyway, the Fodor complied with Azik and gave back the crew's weapons, and so Azik figured he would go find the crew now, too. Azik was short with his goodbyes, but Vala thanked the devotees for everything. Remember what we talked about, Sardar Tlaren said to her as they left. I will, Vala replied. She and Azik began leaving for the Costian diner, but before making it off the porch of the temple, they saw Azario, Filini, and Usian heading towards them. Lucky you didn't come back earlier, Azik said as they approached. No, we saw everything, Zario answered. We noticed those mirrors on their way here from the diner and then saw them load up some prisoners at the hangar. But we have some more bad news. The others took the ship to go look for Hawk. They're gone. You're kidding, right? Aza couldn't believe how much was going wrong. I wish I was, Zarya replied. Maybe that's why Drop didn't mention a ship, Aza then thought. They actually might have saved themselves. But then how could the Ascendancy possibly know anyone was here, and for that matter, at the temple? The question remained looming in everyone's mind, especially now. So I don't get it, Zario began again. Did the Ascendancy come for us, or for those prisoners they had at the hangar? Those were not prisoners, Voter Glass answered. They were innocent citizens, taken because we would not give you up. That's crazy, Zario said in return. Why wouldn't the citizens tell them we were here? Perhaps because they didn't want to be the cause of your suffering. Klaus replied. You mean because they're afraid of us too? I would be much more concerned about the Ascendancy than us, Isaac interjected. That may be part of it, Klaus started again, but perhaps it is just not in our nature to directly harm another innocent person, including by handing them over to an enemy. Isaac shook his head. Like I said, nonsense. A new rotation began on Ravina, but from local space, one could only go by a clock to know what time it was on planet. Master Sergeant Maloon of the Free World Alliance was able to get a little bit of rest before returning to her station on the bridge. She was greeted by her superior when she arrived. Maloon, I hope you're well rested, Sergeant Major Ty Robin said to her. Of course, Commander, Maloon replied. Do you need me for something? Yes. Robin started. I haven't received an update from Sergeant Rees in quite some time now, which you know is unlike her. I need you to take Dodds and make sure she is alright. I'll send you her probable coordinates and keep you updated on them. And once you reach her, assess the situation. And if she is still with Lieutenant Zinn, make sure you don't blow her cover. Do not be seen. Of course, sir, Maloon said. We will leave immediately. She then went to find her subordinate, who was in the spacer's quarters along with the others. Corporal, she said to him as she entered the room. Let's go. We have work to do. Tice, you're all receiving orders directly from the sergeant major now. Don't screw around. Aye, sir, answered Corporal Dodds, and followed her off to prepare their fighters. After Maloon left the bridge, Ravim sent the rest of the crew out. I need to contact command, he said. Now alone, he opened communications, and soon a gruff voice came from the other side. Ugh, what do you want? I have some bad news for you, Ravim replied, with a hint of amusement. Azik and the rest of the crew were now stranded on Kostia for the time being, but chose not to remain at the temple thinking it best to lay low until they could find another ship, despite Photoglass's insistence that he could help them with their predicament. 
Isaac wondered how the others managed to get grab bikes, but they told him they were borrowed, then quietly returned them to the Costian diner from where they took them. If we're leaving the city, let's get some more of those mushrooms first, Lucian said, wisely thinking of their next meal. Sure, Isaac replied. It's on the way out anyway. He thought of the woman he had met there the other rotation, and was hoping he would get to see her again. They made their way on foot out of the city toward the Costian Mushroom Grove, but when they got there, Isaac noticed the workers were much less active now than they were last rotation. Looking closer, he saw there was something going on in the rocky enclosure used as a preparation and sales station. When they drew near, Isaac noticed that several of the workers were inside the enclosure, consoling someone. It was the young woman Isaac had met the other rotation. When the crew got to the enclosure, the workers looked up and then were startled to see who it was, but they seemed to almost shield the woman from them. Go away, one of the men said, still frightened by the outlanders. We don't want any more business from you. What's going on here? Isaac asked. It's not your concern, the same man replied. Now leave us alone. But before they could do so, the young woman spoke up in a trembling voice. They took him because of you. Because you savages have to bring your war with you everywhere you go. Now he's gone. She began to weep once more. Who do you mean? Isaac inquired. Her father, the man answered Isaac again. One of the owners of this grove. He was one of the ones taken by drop because of you. It's your people that brought us here, Isaac started to respond impatiently. And it's your people who refuse to defend yourselves. Don't blame us if the Ascendancy is finally ready to put you away. The young woman looked at Azik quite angrily. The crew then left and Azik felt a little bad, but it was sticking to what he said. The Costians had this coming the way they act. Maybe they should have trusted less in an imaginary person, he thought. He then thought of the young woman again and sighed. So does that mean that it's up to us to save these people? Everyone was rather tired from the events over the past few Costian rotations, but they now had no real place to rest. But whether indoors or outdoors on Costia, there wasn't much difference other than level of comfort, and so the crew nevertheless found somewhere to relax for a rotation and consider how they were going to get off the planet. So there's no chance they're coming back then? Azik asked Zario. Yeah, maybe after they find Hawk, Zario replied. But there's obviously little chance of that happening, so don't count on those fools. I know we need to get going, Bala began, but I am really worried about these people, and I have a feeling we're the only ones who can help them. I think we should go back to the temple. Not having any transport, the group was as of yet still close to the capital city. Vala, Azik responded, don't take this the wrong way, but you've had an odd relationship with that temple since we got here. So don't blame me if I'm not totally buying your motives for returning. The comment quieted Vala. I have to admit, Villainy now chimed in. I feel kind of bad too. They did stick their necks out for us after all, and didn't give us up either. Maybe Vala is right. Zarya looked to Usian for his feelings on the matter, then addressed Azik. Well, I think it's up to you, Zin. What are we going to do? For now, Azik replied, we're going to get some rest. And with that, the conversation was at an end. It is unthinkable that you would allow things to go so far, a very stern voice said to Father Klaus. Have you no intelligence at all? Or was your desire to sentence to death not only our order, but also our religion and our world? Speak. Photoglass wore a sorrowful expression, and hated the admonishment of his superior, Abo Avila, whose study he now occupied, along with Father Blem, Sauter Tlarens, and another robe-clad woman. But Glaus still remained convicted for his reasons for the way he acted. I'm sorry, Abo, but I must do, if this is about what we've discussed in private, Abo Avila cut Glaus off. Then you have taken things too far now, Fodor, and I am suspending you from all your duties. But Avo, Glaus began again. Drop may be returning soon. I need to... Again, the Avo cut Glaus off. 
you don't need to do anything. I will handle the Ascendancy's henchmen, and I will allow Fodder Blem to find some suitable tasks for you to do while you serve your suspension, and just hope I don't turn you over to drop. Blem's expression didn't reveal his feelings on the matter, but Glass knew he would enjoy telling him what to do. Abu Abila, please, Sauter Tlarens now said. You haven't met these outlanders. I cannot help but agree with Father Glaus. What if one of them is the Chosen One? That is enough, Sauter, the other woman in the room shouted at Tlarens. You are just as at fault here. I heard you were teaching the outlander woman about Omnis. You know that is forbidden, and yet would now talk back to the Abo? I have half a mind to expel you entirely. I'm sorry, Mother. Tolarans replied, then bowed her head. Both of you, the Abo began again. Return to your quarters and await your next instruction. Laos and Tolarans both gave the respectful bow of the Costians and solemnly left the Abo's study. What are we going to do then? The woman called Mater asked the Abo. I believe I can still mend things with Drop, the Abo replied as long as we can stop these two troublemakers from doing anything else foolish. A new rotation had begun on Costia, yet the people of Omnis were still in a fright, and wondered when the Ascendancy would show up again. The city center was still a mess, and many shops remained closed. Most citizens did not want to come out of their homes. Abo Abila sat in silence in a private sanctuary, contemplating what was about to happen. We've lasted all these centuries, he thought, speaking silently to Omnis. And now, because of one fool, it may all come crashing down in an instant. Surely this can't be what you had in mind for your people, to be so destroyed and humiliated by those who have oppressed us for so long. Show me what I must do to stop this. Abila sat there a while longer, getting no clear answer. Then, sighing, he eventually made his way back to his study, which overlooked the city center of Omnis from high above. He had only just begun to work on something when he heard shouts from outside. Looking out to the square, he saw the two armored grav cars that had just sped up to the porch of the temple. Drop then appeared from atop one of them. Come out, old man, he shouted. Time to try this again. Isaac and the crew sat around near the side of the road early the next rotation, still trying to figure out what the best course of action would be, now that they didn't have a ship or any money. If anything, Zario said, I think we're going to need that old guy's help again if we're going to find a way off Costia unless we can somehow scrape up enough of their currency to get passage for all of us somewhere else, but I doubt they're going anywhere friendly. Azik had grown tired of Costi and their practices, but was starting to agree that they just needed to accept that they had to ask once more for the floater's help if they wanted to leave. Just as Azik was about to make up his mind, a grav car came flying up to them and stopped abruptly. When the cover opened, they saw inside the young woman from the mushroom grove. It's you, was all Azik could think to say. Please, she started in a hurry. You must come with me. Drop has come back. He has the prisoners, my father, and he is looking for more. You must help them. You must get my father back, please. Azik didn't know what to say, but replied with, Why would you want the help of a savage like me? The young woman looked down. Please, you are the only one who can get him back. Azik stared at the woman. He didn't understand these people, and much less did he understand her. But there was something about her that made it hard for Azik to tell her no. Fine, he eventually said. We'll help you. Yes! Buzian gave a roar of excitement. <laughs>